Welcome back to a new LAVU tutorial demonstration where today we're going to be taking a look at LAVU's inventory platform. Specifically, we're going to get into the inventory settings. We're going to talk about creating ingredients, receiving those ingredients, and also wasting them, as well as reconciling inventory at the end of the week, month, or quarter, however often you decide to do it. So before we even jump into the section labeled inventory, we're going to go into our location settings and we're going to navigate to inventory settings. Here we're able to create units of measure and also adjust the default options that are available. So you'll see that you've got weight and volumetric units already created for you. If there's one that you know you aren't going to use, like let's say I'm never going to use grams and I don't plan on it, I can go ahead and remove it here and make my life a little bit easier while we're creating those ingredients. If I ever need to bring it back, I can click add weight unit and it will bring it back. The real power of our custom units is the custom units themselves, being able to create whatever unit of measure that we would like and then giving it its own conversion unit. So here I have a pretty basic example. The name is dozen. The symbol is DZ. That's what you're going to see when you assign units of measure to an ingredient. And then my conversion unit is 12, basically meaning for every dozen of something that I have, that equates to 12 individual units. You can make these to say, anything you would like to accommodate any sort of measurement that may not fit nicely into your traditional weights and volumes that you would see here. After going through your units of measure, it's worth taking a look at your storage location and inventory categories, removing the ones you don't need and also adding the ones that you do. Again, the point of coming here first before we jump into inventory is to minimize how much back and forth we need to do between the two pages. If we can set up as much as we can up front, that'll just save us time in the long run. So here are the options for inventory categories that I've created, and of course you can always add more later. Lastly, you have your waste reasons. This is going to be used both in the control panel and on the point of sale by your employees. Whenever they need to waste an item, they need to provide a reason. Here you can list the default options and what you'll use in the control panel. It should be noted on the point of sale, your employees will also be given an other option where they can type in a custom reason, all of which will of course be available in your reports. Once you've done all the setup that you need, we can jump into inventory and we'll land on the dashboard where we can see the current value of our inventory. We can see the number of items that are low in stock. If I actually click on this number, it'll give me a list of well, right now it's just the one item, but it'll give me a list of all the items that are low in stock based on a threshold that we'll set later. There's also numbers for your dollar amounts that have been wasted and also what you'd find in expected receivables. If you plan on using this, you are going to have to first create vendors. And it should be noted that currently LAVU does not have any sort of outside contact with these vendors. So the purpose of creating vendors, assigning it to your ingredients, and then creating purchase orders here would be purely for record keeping. There's no outside contact as of right now, so it should be noted before you decide to take the plunge and create all these vendors and start managing these long purchase orders, it should be noted that LAVU will not have any outside contact. Uh, once you have those vendors created, you can edit their information at any given time and you can see a list of ingredients that you have attached to that vendor. When you're ready, we can jump into manage and we can actually start creating ingredients as well as seeing our existing ingredients. This uh, item right here is marked with an orange number to indicate that it's low in stock. I'll show you where to set that threshold in a minute. To just create a brand new ingredient, we're gonna come up here to the top right corner to our action menu and click add items. And we'll need to fill out some pretty basic information about the item. Anything with a red star is required. So for this item, I'm going to create a brisket menu item. I'm going to give it a cost. This is how much I, as a restaurant owner, will pay for the ingredient. And this is going to be per your purchase unit, which is set down here. So in this example, I'll select pounds once we get down here. I'll select my vendor. I'll select my category. And finally, my location. QTY is short for quantity. So I'll just put in how much I have on stock at uh, the given moment. I'm going to select my purchase unit as pounds. So again, coming back up here to the cost per unit, 
this means that I pay $8.99 per pound for my brisket. And finally, my sales unit, I'm going to select ounces. This is going to make it a lot easier for me when I, move, when I move to the menu to actually assign this ingredient and assign how much is being used per serving. You could also select pounds and make this kind of a one-to-one -one ratio, but that's going to involve me using decimal numbers when I frankly don't have to. So I'm going to change this to ounces. Click add item. And you can see the fields up here clear, so I can add another ingredient. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to add the one by clicking save down here. Now, this does take quite a while, especially if you plan on tracking a large number of inventory ingredients. So it should be noted that you can actually speed this up a little bit by importing. If you have a spreadsheet or want to create a spreadsheet of all of your ingredients, once you have that made, you can come in here and import. And what you'll actually get when you come to this import page is a template that you can copy and paste the relevant columns in that Labu needs in order to bulk update your inventory with all the ingredients that you're going to be tracking. There's going to be a separate video that very specifically covers how to set up that template and some uh, common pitfalls to avoid as well. So be sure to check that video out when it comes out, or if you're watching sometime later, it might already be out. One thing I didn't cover on here, let me go back into the brisket item. Uh, up in the top right corner, we have an 86 count sales unit and a low stock alert purchase unit. These are those thresholds that I mentioned earlier. They serve different purposes. The 86 count sales unit, this is going to determine when the item should be removed from your menu. So any items attached with this ingredient, once it hits this number, which is currently zero, it is based off of sales unit, so that would be zero ounces, it will remove any of those attached items from, a, from my menu automatically. Low stock alert, this is what we saw on the dashboard where I had an item that was low in stock. Anything that dips below this number in terms of its purchase unit is going to show up on that list. So I'm actually gonna change this to 10 so that it alerts me when I dip below 10 pounds. I'll go ahead and save my settings here. And now let's navigate to the menu where we're actually going to attach these ingredients. So updating the ingredients and putting them in your control panel is half of what you'll need to do with inventory during your initial setup. Once you are ready, you can go into your menu items and we can start actually attaching these ingredients to our, to our menu. You have a gray ingredients box over here on the right hand side. Just click on that, click add more and select your ingredient from this dropdown. This is a pretty small list, so it's pretty easy to find, but as it gets longer and longer, just note that it is going to alphabetize your ingredients, so that will make it easier to find as your list continues to grow. Now, I'm gonna leave this at one, and right now the sales unit is ounces. That's what we have set. If I ever change that, it would update here as well. Uh, I'm going to keep this at one, and that's because for this particular menu, what I have it set up to do is actually use our Bluetooth weight scale, where it's going to measure my meat in terms of ounces. So I want it to equate to that when it's actually being used in my inventory. So I'm gonna keep this at one. If I was gonna do an item like half pound of brisket and that was going to always be a half pound, then I would update this number to eight ounces. You can add as many ingredients as you like, but again, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to use the one. Once you're done, you can click save. And one other setting that I would recommend checking out is in the details setting. Way at the bottom, you've got a section for your 86 countdown tracking. The default option is going to be don't track. Of course, since we want this item to be removed when we run out, we actually wanna change this to track by inventory item level. That'll just make sure our servers, our employees, they don't ring up items that we can't actually make in the kitchen. So I'll go ahead and set that, click apply. And once again, I'll save my settings to commit those changes to my control panel. It should be noted that you can also add ingredients to your modifiers. So here I've got a list of forced modifiers that all have ingredients added to it. If I was gonna do a certain amount of brisket for, looks like this is my breakfast taco uh, options that they can select from, I can again come into ingredients. It's the exact same screen. I'll do brisket and we'll say I'm gonna put in three ounces in one serving. Apply, click save, and it updates just like it did in the menu items. Now let's head back into the inventory page real quick. Once you have your ingredients created and you're actively using it with your menu, you are going to slowly chip away at your stock of items. And as they go down, you obviously need to replenish. So this is when I'll start talking about how to receive 
inventory ingredients. I'll start by doing it through purchase orders, which again is purely for record keeping. If you're going to create vendors, you can use orders. If you aren't going to create vendors, you'll want to receive them manually through the manage page. I'll show that off here in just a minute. In the orders page, you can place a new order. You'll select your vendor, and then you'll be prompted to select which items you'd like to order. So if I needed to order more brisket, I would select the item, select my quantity. The unit is going to be your purchase unit, which you're not really going to want to change. You'll want to keep that as it is. Uh, update your price if the price has changed with your vendor to keep things consistent and the value of your inventory accurate. My item gets added to my order, and you can see, once again, these fields up here clear, so I can add multiple ingredients to a single order. But as you probably assume, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to add the one item. So now I have this order pending. Once I receive it, I'll jump back into here, indicate how much of the ingredient that I received. In theory, that would be all of it. And when I update it with all the ingredient received, it would change from a pending status to a closed status. Now, if you aren't going to use vendors, you aren't going to use the purchase orders page. If you need to receive anything, you can do that from the manage page here. We'll go to the same action menu we use to create ingredients. And you can see down here, you have the option to receive items. This will let you add stock to your inventory without needing to create a vendor or a purchase order. Just above that, you should take note that you can also waste your ingredients. So if you notice something expires or something went bad, you can waste items in bulk from here. You do not have to do it from the point of sale checkout screen. Lastly, to wrap up this video, we'll talk about reconciling inventory. This would be when you're doing your counts, where LaVu will tell you, based on your sales and your serving portions, what you should have in your restaurant. The idea here is that you're actually going to go through, count, or in this case, maybe weigh everything in your restaurant and tell LaVu the correct number. So if it assumes, based off of my sales, that I should have nine pounds of bacon, and I actually weigh everything and I only have eight and a half pounds, I would want to make sure that this number is updated here. That way, when I do run low on this particular ingredient, it removes those items from my menu and there isn't this discrepancy of half a pound. Now, as an inventory manager, I might take a closer look, maybe weigh these items again, but that of course will be uh, under your discretion as the restaurant owner to decide what a good variance or what a bad variance might be. So that'll wrap it up for this video. I just wanted to very briefly cover all these different topics. There are going to be specific videos going over each of these pages and more coming out. So feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel to make sure you get notified when those videos come out. And if you're watching this a couple months in advance, those videos might already be out. So do check out our channel for more tutorials on inventory, as well as hardware videos and also videos about menu building and all sorts of other things that we have here at LaVu. I appreciate your time and thank you for watching and we will see you next time.